Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. Uh, hey guys, uh, let's just jump right into it today. Let's just get Ooh, no segue, no starting discussion. Start on the beginning at the Breaking very, very beginning. Ground. Somewhere there's someone who's like, ah, oh, freaking finally. Yeah. Th- and then some people are going to, they already have skipped ahead. Right. Like, what? They're in the middle of the conversation already? Oh, well, so, oh, so now rewind the- on YouTube. <laughs> Press the rewind button. Right. It's like the, oh, it's the YouTube thing where the first third has to be uh, right. totally useless. It's That's 30 right. seconds. Always <laughs> first, skip the, the first, first 30 third, seconds. At least. And I think we're good now. So, um, Yeah. Uh, let's talk about getting stuff. We've talked about this a little bit before, like where you find materials. Where you find materials. And it's actually interesting that la- the last couple of years I've been speaking at Maker Fair, and I'll be speaking there again this year Ooh. Uh, in San Mateo. Uh, it's, a, it's a really, really common question. And some 12 or 13-year-old kids said, where do I buy raw materials? Well, because a lot of times, like you'll – if you Google something – if you want something like wood or leather – then you Google it and you get to a website that looks like it was designed in like 1996. Right. And it has a whole bunch of stuff that's incomprehensible. It's not like going to Amazon and mashing buy now and it's at your house two days right. later. And also and can be expensive. It also can yeah. be expensive. You go to SH Frank here and you want to buy stuff by the hide or the half hide and it's that's like a hundred bucks. It's real money. So it's where you can get human leather? <laughs> no, no oh. cow leather. Oh, oh, my bad. <laughs> so scavenge. So, yeah. So um where to get stuff. Um so obviously the first place that we all got shit was uh, dumpster diving. Yeah. I mean, dumpster diving is and, – and each city has its own specific thing. Like New York is the greatest dumpster diving city in the world. Because well, they just put the trash out on the side of the street in bags and you could just go dig through it. And not only that, but they – like <clears throat> somebody moves into a building that was occupied by somebody else and they yeah. just throw everything out. This I've is- found televisions, VCRs. CD collections all on the street in New York. This is dangerously close to an episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. But but yeah, when like the week after Christmas, you when I was a kid, we we would go around and just look at see what kind of cool stuff was yeah. in the trash. Absolutely, because people would get a new TV and their old like 1955 Victrola, which was an amazing console thing. I, I made an awesome fish tank out of that. Now, so I'll tell you about looking for raw materials. Um, it's catch as catch can to go through the, you know, uh, dumpsters in a neighborhood. However, on a Sunday, driving to an industrial area where there's a lot of companies that make stuff, Ooh. those dumpsters, if they're not locked, are actually often going to be full of lots of great stuff. Like functioning computers. Uh, well, or, or sheets of rubber that other shapes were punched out of. Okay. Uh, scraps of plywood, scraps of acrylic, uh, clear plastic, scraps of leather. I've found all of that stuff in industrial parks. The trick is don't do it at night. Yeah. Because I've been pulled over by the cops and they're just, it's a boring distraction for them to pull you over and check your ID for wandering around empty parts of town in the middle of the night. Well, you, uh, you, put, but, you take your ski mask off when they pull you so, over, right? Look, just go on Sunday morning. Okay. Just go on Sunday morning to an industrial park and there's no one's going to bother you and you could find some really great materials. Now, San Francisco is fantastic for that. I got lots of stuff from the industrial parks in the South Bay. Um, But also San Francisco happens to be one of the great garage sale cities in the country. On Saturdays and Sundays, you can do what we call garage sailing here. (laughs) Yeah, you just, you you take your camera and maybe your kids and dog and whatever, and then just go for a walk. Yeah, And and it turns out you'll find garage sales. Yeah. And especially in the summer, you can find Craigslist now is a fantastic Mm -hmm. resource. You can just list off like 10 of them you're going to go to. And again, people will often list that they've got materials uh, and you can get a lot of great stuff there. I like construction dumpsters too. Construction dumpsters are awesome. And they're never locked because they're usually those open top ones. Have you ever gone to a business where you're like, okay, this dumpster is really rich of stuff, but I don't want to, you know, why are they throwing a dumpster when I get from them when they're done with it? I mean, will they wise up and then not throw that stuff away? Well, uh, or not that sell I to know you, of. Or? I used to live across the street from a rubber company called Darkoid Rubber. They moved out to the East Bay like everybody else did. Um, but back when they were across the street from me, um, I actually, first I would grab stuff out of their dumpster and then I would just go over and be like, can I buy some more sheets of that stuff you guys yeah. punch all the circles out of? And they were like, <laughs> yeah. And they would just, and then, you know, if you get a friendly, a friendly person over there, They'll just hand you if they're going to throw it out. Carfuls of crap. Yeah. If you go to um, and now now they probably buy it in in bulk at a cheaper rate than you can buy it individually. And usually a manufacturer is buying things in sheet form or large amounts of it, and they don't need the scraps that are the cutoffs. So I also got 
when I was in my early 20s here in San Francisco in the early 90s, I got tons of stuff by going to like a sheet metal fabrication place and asking for scraps. And they would just sell them to me for like, you know, what, a dollar a pound or yeah, something Yeah, they'd give like you a that. big giant box of, of yeah. stuff for Here's a bunch bucks. of aluminum cutoffs. And for me, I only needed a little sheet of aluminum. For them, that's recycling garbage. So, okay. So now there's some do's and don'ts here. Mm -hmm. Don't break locks. Don't ever break locks. Don't climb fences. Don't, no. Um, don't wear a ski mask. Don't, don't wear a bloody ski mask. <laughs> I mean, unless it's really cold, yeah, you know, like in Minnesota, yeah, yeah, yeah. but and, you know, you know, yeah, all of that is absolutely true. Um, would you recommend collecting things that you might not need right now, but you know, someone else would want for potential trades? I've done a lot of that over the years and it's great because you, you know, you eventually, if you're interested in something and you're making, you'll find a community of makers and you'll hold on to stuff for other people. And, you know, someone says, oh, I really need this thing. Oh, actually it turns out I have six of them. Now, now, hold on. Maker space. Now there's a danger here. Yeah. Because you can turn into a hoarder you if you're not turn careful. Into a hoarder. I have, I'm a long-term high-functioning high functioning. hoarder. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, in San Francisco, and I don't know if this exists in other cities, there is a fantastic other resource that a lot of people don't know about called Scrap. Um, I don't know about Scrap. And it is a function of the San Francisco Unified School District. Um, if you are a manufacturer and you have a bunch of stuff that you feel like, oh, I should donate this to kids to make art with. Mm -hmm. uh, in San Francisco, you would call up Scrap and you donate it to them. They come and get it. They put it in their place. Uh, and they sell it for really cheap to artists and teachers. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, I haven't gone there in years because you know, I can afford and I I can yeah. afford real materials and I don't need to take materials from people who are trying to buy them cheaply. That's the main reason. But Scrap supplied me with art supplies for, you know, 15 years. I love that place. Uh I'm not actually even sure where they are right now. They might be on Napoleon or down in the around the Bayshore. District, Bayshore, uh, so, Corridor, but, yeah. down but, but, there. How would you find out about, I mean, it's, I don't know what you'd look for in the phone book, yeah. but call like the the high school art teacher and see, see if they be, have recommendations could, absolutely maybe? Absolutely could be that that's exactly where you'd look. Um, I mean, Colleges, would they have materials? They, yeah, they, they could. A theater departments often mm -hmm. throw out lots of stuff that, you know, again, and when you're a beginning maker, all you need are scraps. All you really need are, you can, you can yeah. scavenge and just a little piece of canvas so that you... You know, I remember being like, oh, Christ, I need four, two yards of white canvas, and that's 14 bucks, and I don't have that right now. Yeah. I mean, I remember just like, ah. Oh. So for me, all of those, I would just kept on gathering those stuff because it was awesome. So um, this is what, like, when you have scraps left over at the end of a project, I have a big box of scraps in my garage. Yeah. It's scrap wood and scrap plastic and scrap metal and all sorts of stuff. I mean, do you, you do you keep that stuff and I just keep like, it? I sort it as yeah. long as it's usable. Um, I'll often cut uh, cut pieces square so that they're more useful. Okay. Um, but so now we're talking. We've been talking about uh, stationary materials, like non moving materials yeah. here. Um, let's talk about moving materials because if what you want is wiring, uh, relays, and motors and stuff like that. The pick and pull auto yard. Oh, like a like a like go to the junkyard. Mm, yeah. You so so I again I'm not sure how many there are in other cities, but in San Francisco, there's a couple in San Francisco, there's a couple out in the East Bay, uh out on Hagenberger Road. And when I had my Volvo, that's where I was buying new window so, motors and stuff. But mm, when you're making robots, R2D2 here's pow was powered at one point by a couple of uh window motors in yeah. his feet. Those came at five bucks a piece from a pick and pull yard, you know, pulled them out of a Volvo. Um, you find, uh, you get your wiring, you get relays, you get switches. Solenoids. Get solenoids. All sorts of stuff, yeah. There's is that just, just, I mean, is that organized in any way by them? It's, no, no, it's definitely <laughs> so you not. Just, you just gotta go. So pick. this is a yard where you will go to a huge lot out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. There'll be cars stacked sometimes three high of every make and model. And you go through and pull out what you want. And when you're done, you go to the counter with this box full of stuff. And some guy looks at it and goes, ah, 30 bucks. Yeah. It's, so, like, and they'll have standard prices for things like window washer motors yeah. and wheel hubs Alternators. and gear shifts and stuff. And for yeah. a lot of the little crap that you need, they'll just be like, Give me five bucks for all that. Yeah, and, and well, and you can take like the back of if you want a bunch of leather, take the back of a seat off. Yes, if you want, yes, um, exactly. If you want, if you want headliners are good for stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Light latches, bolts, and, lights, it's all yeah. twelve volt system, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
Yeah, pick take, a pull take yards your own are, wrenches. Are fantastic. Yeah, take your own wrenches. Um, you will lose one there one day, but you'll also find others that people other people have <laughs> lost. You'll find a never ending source of sticky change. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and stale French fries if you dig deep enough in the in the seats. Stale French fries, um, um, but it's a great great resource for really inexpensive robotic stuff. Especially given that you know, save your budget and spend it on a twenty dollar Arduino, yeah. and then when you want to power stuff with it, man, you know that's the that's the place to get go. a solenoid and a motor for twenty bucks. Yeah, I I wonder if um the other places like appliance junkyards. I, I've not seen one here, but when I was in when I was in Tennessee, there were places where you would take your old washing machine, and they'd kind of like sit for a while, and then they'd all get sold to the scrap really? metal guy. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, and you can go buy like washing machine motors and stuff well, there. So which there are was great. a there was a place out here, uh, which I can't remember what it was called, HMR maybe, uh, that sold that took uh, defunct computer hardware, refurbished a lot of it, and sold it in the third world. But they just had a warehouse full of all sorts like of old crap. crap. Yeah. Um, uh, this lamp I bought there. Hmm. I don't know what a, com- a computer refurbisher was doing with this lamp, but they yeah. sold it to me for like 75 bucks. Well, and, and so yeah, th- like look for places that buy scrap, broken appliances, yeah. stuff like that. Call those people because the guy who, buy, who buys the broken dishwasher from the people at Lowe's that come and haul your old dishwasher away when they put the new one in. Yes. Like that guy's going to have a bunch of stuff that kind of works mm-hmm. and you might be able to dig around and find some sheet metal or, or racks or you know, wheels, whatever you need. There's Absolutely. all sorts of weird stuff in that, in that kind of business. Um, so yeah, those are, those are my primary recommendations. You know, the trick is not to get too greedy. Like Mm -hmm. don't, and I, look, I dragged home whole cash registers and stuff like that, that turned out to look really cool, but it was hard to get parts out of them. And boy, was my roommate pissed off. Well, and and, and, and so (laughs) there's a space and you're going to end up with some junk too. Yeah. But like, like old Blu-ray or not probably not old Blu-ray players. If you take away part of your Blu-ray player, your parents might get upset with you, (laughs) but like old VCRs and, and, um, and, uh, DVD players and stuff like that have great, like tons of little motors that are great for electronic stuff. Uh, computer, if you have old optical drives, Drives, they have they have at least two motors in there yep. that are usually good. Absolutely great motors. Um, they have a laser great usually. magnets in them. Yeah, they magnets have are beautiful good. magnets in old computer hard drives. Um, yeah, yeah, actually, specifically the swing arm on on that that goes back and forth to read the read heads has at least two or three really strong rare earth magnets. Yeah. always, always. I mean, it's just that's I, I have hundreds of those. Yeah, they're great. And it also, if you're worried about data data privacy, then it's a good way to destroy the data on the hard drive before you put it in the landfill. So, <laughs> um, hard drives. Yeah, there you go. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, like so, what about like hardwood and leather and stuff like that? Because that, that stuff seems to be pretty regional. It does. It it is pretty regional. Um, there are uh, again here. You got to do you got to do some legwork on yeah. that in San Francisco. Uh, I learned from driving around, and this is also some a weird thing about my personality. I, sometimes when I'm bored and I don't have anything to do, I like to drive through industrial areas. Okay. I like the quietness of them on the weekend. It's kind of relaxing to me. And San Francisco used to have this big, huge no man's land down where Pac Bell Park is now. Mm-hmm. Um, over in Potrero Hill, I knew of at least two commercial wood shops that had a free bin out front. Oh, wow. And so they would have scrap wood generated from projects, and they would just put it in the free bin. Uh, I knew of a, of a window manufacturer, uh, Ocean Glass and Sash here, that gave me a bunch of uh, scrap wood. You know, if, you, if what you want is, let's say, wood, different kinds of hardwoods or softwoods and stuff like that, and what you need is little scraps of it, Go to a business that makes stuff with that wood and have, start a relationship with them. Ask them, you know, and you're going to run into a lot of people who are like, buzz off. I don't have time for you. Yeah. But if you have some the, reasonable interpersonal skills and you, you, you talk to them, they might go, oh, yeah, go to that bin over there by Bob and take what you want. Yeah. I mean, the worst thing they're going to do is tell you to buzz off. Mm-hmm. They're not going to shoot you unless you're wearing the ski mask. Um and then if you want to actually buy stuff, though, then then you can ask those same people where where to get supplies. Exactly. Because, like, I found – well, I mean, I ask you a lot of times, which I know probably gets annoying. But <laughs> No, no, um, no. I love – I love dispensing information. It's one of my favorite things. Well, so so, but you can also go into the, like a carpentry shop, and and a lot of times a, a, a cabinet maker will say, "Oh yeah, there's three good wood shops here. Here's where you need to go." Yes, and and then they can also save you a lot of hassle, like breaking down plywood. Can, All you can, need is pay somebody to do well, that if you're well, if you're in that kind of. We yeah. can also talk about this this other aspect of starting relationships with starting relationships with people who might be able to help you with materials is a kind of a a thing like. 
what I call, and someone told me this years ago, an informational interview. Okay. And what you call up a place and you say, hi, uh, cabinet manufacturer company. Uh, how are you? My name is Bill. I'm 19 years old. I'm interested in making things for a living. I would like to come in and talk to you for 20 or 30 minutes about how you do your business, how you hire, what the what the industry is like, and just to get a picture yeah. of it. And I did a lot of this when I was freelancing. I did it at a couple of different com- a few different companies when I was looking to branch out because there wasn't any work in special effects. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can end up with both a relationship with someone who might be able to help you with materials, but also the side benefit is you end up understanding. <laughs> Excuse me. Wow, that was a good one. Thank you. Uh, you end up understanding something about an industry that you didn't know about before. Yeah. And so, look, there you are wanting to make stuff, and you, you know, you're know, you calling up a cabinet company, and they might be willing to have you sweep up the floors for a few bucks an hour yeah. uh, one day a week and then give you a chance to actually cut some wood and learn something. It's genuine interest. Yeah. Nothing nothing at all wrong with that. Um, what about more esoteric stuff like like resins and Kind of special specialty stuff that becomes that becomes casting and mold making materials become really difficult. Uh, so when we're talking about those sort of art supplies, I would lump in paints and glues and things like that. Stuff that's hard to dispose of. Stuff that's as well. hard to dispose of. Um, you know, there's there's there are so many grades of of paint out there: acrylic paint, oil paint, and none of it's that expensive. Mm-hmm. That's pretty reasonable. Those those perishable materials, though, consumables. You, What's that? Consumables. Consumables. There's not really an inexpensive intersection to those. So I go mean, to Michael's really a free or, intersection or if you those. share. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can buy nice small amounts of most things at the hobby store. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where – and actually when it comes to buying uh, cyanoacrylate glue, I used to buy it in big bottles. And it took me years before I realized these bottles are, are going bad. They're, They're like drying, drying up. out. Yeah. So I now buy it in the smallest bottles possible. And that means I'm never wasting glue because I throw, I'm throw. i done with the bottle, throw it out, pick up another bottle. Um, and that's also the least expensive way. In. Buy it for you know, a couple bucks for a, a CA glue. Yeah. Or you, or you buy a hundred pack of the little tiny things. Exactly. Which is- um, the other way that people uh, save on consumables, and this is something that the internet has allowed that wasn't around when I was a kid, is, uh, is bulk purchasing. Mm-hmm. Um, on the RPF, for instance, there are frequently – uh, bulk purchases that happen because, let's say, the fabric that you want to make your uh, uh, flight suit from Battlestar Galactica out of can only be bought a hundred yards at a time at a cost of you know forty dollars a yard. Mm-hmm. That's, That's an expensive flight suit. You know, four and a half grand to get that stuff. Who's yeah, got that? Kind and you of need dough? what three yards? <laughs> right, you need four yards to make your costume. So. Uh, RPF is a, a forum where people's like, okay, I'm going to order a bunch of this Dark Knight mesh material. Who's in? I need 25 people in order to do the minimum order, and everyone gets it for a lot. And that less. guy takes care of shipping everyone. Exactly. Might wait a little longer, but and, it's worth it. And in the end, that guy probably got his for free, which yeah. he totally deserves yeah, he for managing that damn project. Yeah. Well, so then, and then that also applies to electronic stuff too. Like if you want to buy resistors or LEDs or capacitors or you know tiny components, yeah. Um, if you buy that stuff in the ones and twos, it's going to cost you a couple bucks each sometimes. Yeah. If you buy a hundred of them, then it costs you practically nothing. Absolutely. So, you know, build a kit, sell the kit to friends, whatever. Make a kit. Yeah. yeah make, make it, buy, design a kit. Buy parts from China in, in the thousands. Mm. And yeah. And again, you know, uh, Amazon is fantastic for that with free shipping they have on small runs of stuff. Uh, make magazine, the kits that, yeah. uh, that, that make, uh, dot com has on, on their site. For, make zine, I think. Make zine, sorry. Yeah. Uh, for their electronics kits are they they do a really great job at staying really low end by giving you five of everything what you need for like four or five projects but yeah. also an overview you have one right 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 over there it looks like a microcontroller kit right it is a, it was a microcontroller kit i think there's something else in there uh, but I'm, i can't remember what it is um spark fun does the same thing a yes. lot of times spark fun and and adafruit does kind of projects in that same oh vein. well and let's also talk about you know again a lot of what we're talking about about this is who you know yeah Right, it's making it's starting relationships with other people who a might need the same materials, b are use them on a regular basis and don't care about sizes that you do, um, and so I think we should talk about hackerspaces as well. Oh yeah, I mean hackerspaces is a great place to share resources, share knowledge, and share expenses mm-hmm. in in putting together things that you might not be able and, to. And even though some require memberships and many require memberships, those people are more than happy on their own time. 
to dispense information. Absolutely. And well, and most 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 places have an open night too. So if you have a project that you have questions about and want to kind of take it for a test run, you can go in on Thursday night or whatever, and there'll be a couple people there who'll answer questions for you. Exactly. Um, and access to tools is really important because lots of those guys, rather than buy a tool and let it sit in their garage and use it twice a year, they'll take it in there and assuming everybody takes good care of stuff, then you'll have a nice collection of tools before too long. Absolutely. Um, I, a couple of retail places. Yeah. Uh, hardware stores. You turn me on to hardware stores. Like you should. It's worth taking an an afternoon and going around and just walking down the aisles of the hardware store and looking to see what's in there. I still do this. I still do this on an almost, let's say, a monthly basis. I'll be driving through a town. There'll be a little hardware store, mm-hmm. you know, Tuggers Hardware Store, something <laughs> like that. And I'll just go in and they'll say, "Would you are you looking for anything?" I'm like, "No, just looking around." And every hardware store is different. Yeah, you'll find. You know, if you're a maker, you're on, sometimes you're looking for a specific switch, like a double pull, double throw, three position toggle switch. But sometimes you're just looking for, I need a chrome ring about eight inches in diameter. And I can't tell you how many times when I was young, I'd go into a store and they go, we don't have those. Like, really? You know this this quickly yeah. that you don't have a There's 30,000 things in <laughs> right. here. Yeah. And people, they will throw you off. But you go and you browse and you will learn so much about how things get put together, about what exists out there to do that. What yeah. exists. Like just yes. Instead of flipping um, through a catalog, seeing it in person. Well, and, and it's much easier to walk what? through the store and look for it than if you don't know what it's called to Google it. Sometimes and, if you're trying to Google a specific screw, <laughs> you're doomed. There's nothing you're ever going to do to find if you don't know that it's a 3 eighths thread with this head and the blah, 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 blah. And, and let's stainless. talk about catalogs too because I'm still a, a big believer in catalogs for browsing over the internet. Yeah, the, right. inter- the internet hasn't figured out browsing. I mean, Amazon kind of does, but you still have to know what you're looking for when you go in there. So, uh, so we could give the uh, we could talk about the the high end of getting every last thing you need. Our catalogs, like small parts catalog, mm-hmm. um, the granddaddy of them all is of course McMaster Car, uh, and McMaster Car is they're expensive. What was J.C. Whitney? That's one too, right? J.C. Whitney, yeah. Uh, but McMaster Car has this kind of impossible scope of things, and. I don't know if it's still this way, but back when Grant and Tori and I all worked at ILM, McMaster Car was like, you could order from them for months, but they still wouldn't send you a catalog. <laughs> like the catalog was this very precious wow. thing that you only got when you crossed a certain threshold. You had to be this good a customer to enter. But but the thing about the catalog, and McMaster Car was an early adopter of the web, and they worked really hard to put their catalogs up on the web as a kind of a page by page. So you can search both page yeah. by page. It's an editorial product, it's a, catalog, a, yeah. a good catalog. And so they 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 worked really hard to make that interface as good as it can be, but it still doesn't match just sitting there and honestly just – browsing through the... Oh, I didn't know you could get one of well, those. There's a reason that stuff is on the back of the toilet in every machine shop and yes. and, uh, and car uh, uh, car repair place in the so country. So I, I, I visited the studio of this wonderful artist in New York, and he... Uh, he Tom Sachs, and mm-hmm. he he has this... He has a bronze casting of the McMaster car uh. catalog. And I'm so <laughs> in love with this thing because it's exactly that important. It's... Huh? On a pedestal, like, oh, I want one of these. That's great. Um, and I remember, I remember specifically when Grant got sent his Master Car catalog. He like came to like me at the shop. He's like, like, dude, a... check it out. <laughs> I'm like, no way. We're like high fiving. <laughs> um, Radio Shack is up and down depending up on the on the one you have. Radio Shack, my my whole. I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't want mean to, bum to know. You I out. want to love Radio Shack. I have a troubled relationship with them. It's like. I need – you go to their website. Oh, okay. They, it's a SP-105. That's what I need. You go to you go to Radio Shack. Oh, I got the SP-104. We got the SP-106. We don't have the SP-105. Or we do have the SP-105. How many do you need? I need four. Well, we've got three. The thing, I, the <laughs> thing about Radio Shack, though, yes. is if you need an Arduino and you need it tomorrow – you can probably find a Radio Shack in your area oh, they that will have them? an Arduino I, now. I did not realize they so, carried So, yeah, they, like okay. they, they took all that stuff out for a while, yeah. and then they kind of brought a little bit of circuit stuff and LEDs and Arduino stuff back. Don't get me and wrong. it's I way back behind all, the, behind all the cell phones and all the other garbage you're never going to buy. <sighs> and, and can I have your phone number to buy batteries? They always ask for your phone number to buy uh, batteries. Yeah. No, and I, I, I don't know why. My, my dad used to go. They'd say, can we have your phone number? And my dad would go, you don't need that. <laughs> like he's using the force, and I still do that. You don't need that. Like, you don't okay. need my phone number. 
Um, um, anything else? But uh, sorry, so there... I just I can't stress enough that if you can get a hold of an old grain, Granger is another place. Oh, Granger's great. Granger is fantastic. Tractor Supply is good too. What's that? Tractor supplies. I think they're regional. Oh, but it's the same kind of thing. Uh, so, and you said J.C. Whitney. J.C. Whitney is JC car parts. Is car parts and Gray again, Bar. Fantastic, is... fantastic uh, source for weird stuff, especially when you're browsing through it and you see all the different versions of stuff. Uh, American Science and Surplus. Oh yeah, that's a fantastic. American catalog. Science and Surplus. Their mothership store is in Chicago. I have visited that store Ooh. at least four separate times in my life. I love that place. I love their catalog. I've been buying from them for twenty five years. Um, scientific supply catalogs are also great. So yes. if you want, if you need like weird shaped glassware and like some, like some sort of crazy expensive like distilling column, yeah. you can get that there. It's the only place you can get so, that kind of stuff. So you know, if you want to know what stuff is out there, that's really important to kind of put that in your brain. Get catalogs and start flipping through them. Come Bellas is fantastic yeah. for just like a broad array of sporting, sporting and the old catalogs. Stuff. Were What's fine that too? Old older ones, absolutely. Yeah. Because absolutely. once you know what something's called, you can find it. Everything is about what it's called. Yeah. It's all Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah. Once you know the name, you have control. <laughs> um, so I guess that does it for this one. Uh, as always, thank you, uh, Adam, and you guys for Thanks, listening. Guys. Yeah. Thanks for iTunes and YouTube and all the stuff you guys do to help support us on that stuff. Um, if you have questions, the email address is podcast at tested.com and the headline is questions for Adam. Subject line, yeah. Subject line. Did I say headline? Um, <laughs> thanks for your comments and, uh, comments and, yeah. uh, good reviews on, on well, iTunes. And bad reviews on, too. On, I mean, we, we like reviews just in general. So, <laughs> um, as always, thanks guys. And we'll be back next Tuesday with another episode of the show. Bye. Bye. Bye.